welcome to another session of the subject of Harmonic Engineering. So the last session of chapter number three, that is natural phenomena. In the last session, we have discussed about wind and waves, and in this session, we will be studying about the tides and currents. So let's begin with this new session. So first of all, we will be learning about tides. Tides are the periodic rise and fall of sea due to gravitational attraction of sun and moon. So basically, due to the gravitational forces, particularly of moon, the rise and fall in the water level. That is, the tides we have already seen various drawings in which the high tidal level, the low tidal level, mean water level has been shown. The sun being much farther away from earth, the moon exerts more force. As the distance is very less. The earth and moon is compared to the earth and sun. So, the main force is the gravitational pull of the moon rather than of the sun. Tides generally follow the movement of moon more than the sun due to the gravitational force. So, the gravitational force of sun and moon, there is the periodic rise and fall of ocean water called tides. Rise in ocean water level is called the high tide, and the fall is called as the low tide. So, basically, the increase in level of water that is the high tide. And the is termed as the low tide. Tidal range is the difference between high of the high water and the low water level. So that indicates a range. Range is always between two points. So here the tidal range is between the lowest point that is the low water level and the highest point that is the high water level. The types of tides basically are the spring tide and the nymph tide. First of all, we will uh, learn this through the figure, then we will be seeing the theoretical portion. Now basically this is the view for the spring and deep tides. The spring tides occur when the earth, moon and sun are in the same line. Okay, it occurs in two situations and the deep tides occur when the sun, earth and moon are making a sort of 90 degree angle or a perpendicular. So that is also in two conditions. Now we know that full portion of the moon is not visible to us. Okay, the half of the portion is visible to us. The rays from the sun are incident does not have its own light, those rays are reflected to the earth and then we can see the moon. So, first of all, when the sun, earth and moon are in the same light, the gravitational forces of the sun and moon become additive and due to that, the waves are generated which are of high height. So, due to being in the same light, due to the addition of gravitational forces, the spring tide, that is the tides which with a very considerable height are Generated that happens in two cases that is the full moon and the new moon. So, full moon is a situation in which the full portion is visible to us, that is, full portion of the portion which we are able to see, that is, we are able to see half of the portion. So, that half portion is fully visible to us in the full moon. In new moon, that is, the that portion is towards the sun, so we are not able to see the moon, that is, the new moon case. Even in that case, as our sun and moon are in the same line, the spring tides will be generated. This is the full moon case, when the moon is completely visible, here the moon is not visible, it is the new moon case. And in both these cases, the tide is of the considerable height, that is the spring tides of the highest height are generated. Next are the deep tides, which are the tides with the lowest height. So, that is the case in which they are perpendicular. So, it is the first quarter and the third quarter. That is the movement of the moon takes place around the earth. So, this is the first quarter which is below, and in the third quarter it will be above the line connecting sun and the earth. So, here as they become perpendicular, so the gravitational forces become subtractive due to their tides with the lowest height are generated. So, that are the deep tides. These are the two situations for deep tides. First one for spring tides. Here again is the view for the spring tides in the greater pool, that is, is sun, earth, and moon are in the same line, the pools are additive, and so the tides with the highest height will be generated. And here, this is the case representing the new moon condition as we have seen in the previous image. So there is the greater pool, and due to that, the spring tides are generated. Next, this is the view for the deep tides with the lesser pool. The gravitational forces are subtractive, the tides with the lowest height are generated, and this is the image uh, where the moon is in the third 
water. So here the deep tides will be generated. Now let us discuss the theoretical points. First is spring tide, highest tides which occur at interval of half a month, that is the succession of 15 days, occur when the generating forces of moon and sun are negative, the sun, moon and earth fall in one time. When moon is full or new, it is in line with the sun. So we have understood all these points with the help of the image. Deep tides, that is the lowest tide of the month, occurs when the line connecting earth with sun and moon form right angle. Happens when moon is in its waters, that is the first quarter and the third quarter. Here, forces of moon and sun are subtractive, gravitational forces are subtractive. When moon is in first or last, that is the third quarter, lines connecting sun with moon from right angle, here forces are subtractive. So, the lowest tide concentrated here, the highest tide is the spring tide. Next, in the last topic, are currents. So, basically, they are the horizontal movement. Specifically, is the horizontal movement of waves is the fluctuation or the undulation on the surface of the water. Tides is the rise or fall of the water. Causes of the currents first is the difference in temperature and salinity. This point I will be discussing in the next slide. Turbidity of water, this point also I will be discussing in the next slide. First and second point. Third are the tides, that is due to the rise and fall in the water level, which is due to the gravitational force or the pull of the moon. The horizontal movement of water takes place, that is the reason for generation of current. Wind blowing over the ocean surface. So the even wind which generates waves also sometimes due to the wind, the movement, horizontal movement takes place and that is the reason for generation of currents. Now here I will be discussing about the generation of currents due to temperature and salinity difference and due to the turbidity. Next topic types of ocean currents. Now basically the types are classified on the disease or the reason of generating those currents. So first is the primary ocean current produced by the density difference due to temperature and salinity of sea water. Now first of all talking about temperature, due to the sunlight the temperature of the surface water will be more as compared to the water which is in the bottom. So due to this temperature difference a sort of gradient will be generated that gradient uh, which will be generated for creating the balance between these temperature difference. So that gradient creates the horizontal movement of water. So essentially there is difference between the temperature which leads to an imbalance which leads to the generation of gradient which creates the movement of horizontal movement of water. Next is the salinity difference that is the presence of salt which is also not seen in the depth of the water and also not uh, in the full length, so it keeps on varying as per the specific length or as per the specific depth. So also there, due to the difference in salinity, imbalance will be created, which will create a gradient for creating the balance between these two points, and that will lead to the horizontal movement of water, generating the currents. Steeper the gradient, faster will be the current. So steeper means basically, if adjacent to uh, sort of, if we talk about a water body, in which the salinity is very high, that is the concentration is very high in sort of segment. It adjacent to it, uh, the salinity is very minimal, that is very less amount of salts are present, then it would generate a steep gradient because there is an abrupt change in the concentration of salt. It would generate a steep gradient and it would create faster current. Next is the turbidity. Turbidity we know is the presence of sediments in water. So caused by mixing of water sediments in sea water resulting in an increased density of water locally, for example, landslide and the water. So here again this point is similar as to the temperature difference and the salinity difference. If landslide occurs at the sea bed, that is in the bottom, there will be a sudden increase in the concentration of sediments in the sea bottom, that is in the bottom portion, which is not present in the surrounding. So what happens is that due to landslide, there is a sudden increase the sediments that is turbidity is suddenly increased in a local portion which is not present in the rest of the portion. So that will be creating an imbalance again due to the rising amount of sediments which will be creating a gradient for creating the balance and that will generate the horizontal movement of water that is the currents. Now the next and an important topic from the chapter is the current. This word we have come across in chapter number 7 that 
is while we studied the topic of drawings, in that it was mentioned that drawings are used to reduce or mitigate the effect of internal drift. At that point, I had told that we will be discussing this point in detail in chapter number 3. So now that the time has arrived, so we will be discussing about internal drift. First of all, the meaning of the words literal means along the length. It is also called as long short drift. So literal is pertaining to along the length of this profile of the image. Drift means movement. So here the movement of sediments takes place. First of all, what is the problem associated with littoral drift? What happens in littoral drift is that due to the movement of sediments, the profile of the beach changes and also when this impact is highly pronounced, there the erosion of the beach can take First, the problem is that due to the movement of the sediments, the profile of the beach changes, and if no preventive measures are taken, that is, if the are not constructed, then after a certain duration of time, the beach as a whole can get eroded. Now, let us understand the labels and the mechanism or the process by which the littoral drift takes place. First is the beach, that is the land portion. Second is the sea, that is the water portion. Third are the currents, that is the horizontal. Fourth are the waves which have been generated due to the wind. Fifth is the source, that is the movement of sediments from the beach towards the inner side. It is the depot, which is the movement of sediments again towards the water body. So here you can see that a zigzag line is generated. Now what is the process? Due to the inclined direction of wind, the waves are generated. Arrow is in the inclined direction of the waves, that is due to the inclined direction movement of the wind. So, wind first of all generates waves, and the waves are uh, effect on the sediments as well as on the water itself. So, first of all, talking about the water portion, what happens is that as the wave moves towards the beach, due to constantly coming in contact with the beach, dashing of the water with the beach. Is horizontal direction currents are formed. We have learned that the reason the generation of current, one reason is waves, winds as well. So, what happened is that the waves, due to this inclined direction movement, they dash with this end portion and the generation of currents, that is the horizontal movement of water, begins to take place. Next is the effect on sediments. What happened is that it carries the sediments from the point where it is in contact with the water body is the inner portion. So that we have seen uh, while you might have gone to the beaches, that is, this constant movement of water takes place. So it carries the sediments from uh, this point where if it is along the coast and it is carried inside the inner portion of the land, and then again this water recedes, that is, it moves again uh, towards the water body. At that time, it carries the sediments again to this point that is the original or rather adjacent to the point where it was so repeating again first of all due to the inclined direction of wind waves are generated waves will be constantly dashed with the beach the coast and due to that constant dashing the horizontal movement that is the currents will be generated next the sediments from a point will be carried in this why this point is inclined because the waves are inclined due to the inclined direction of wind. So, due to that inclination, the inclined wind generates inclined waves and the sediments from a point are carried inwards towards the coast. And then, again, as the water recedes, the sediments are taken from one point to the another point along that profile, but adjacent to the position where it was before. Now, the direction inclined, this is due to the wind direction. This line is perpendicular why? Because the break wash, that is when the water is moving towards the water body, that is due to the gravitational pull or due to the gravitational force. The gravitational force is always perpendicular, so that is why this line is straight. So, if we talk about the microscopic view, say for example, first a sediment is placed here, then due to the force, that is the inclined movement of view, which are generated due to wind, the sediment will move to this point that is. Towards the coast, then due to the gravitational force, that is the 
make wash that is the water receding towards the water body get sediment will move from this point towards here so this continuous movement will take place that is water will uh, move towards the coast it will recede and it will move again towards the water body so after a period of time the sediment which was here due to this zigzag movement it will move from one point to say for example this another point so the profile of beach is due to the positioning of the sediments so as the sediments move the profile of the beach itself changes so that is the first problem which is associated with littoral drift that is the change in beach profile due to the change in position of the sediment itself here i have given an example a microscopic view of a single sediment but this whole movement takes place in the cluster of the sediments so a bunch of sediments are carried into this littoral drift the main reason is the inclined direction of the wind. So uh, the profile may change any when no preventive measures are taken. Then due to the movement of the sediments, the whole beach might get eroded. So these are the main two problems related to the littoral drift and how the drift takes place, that is the movement of sediments in space. Now what we learned about drawings was that they are built perpendicular to this also. So as they are built perpendicular to the shore, what happens is that it is a good structure and it traps the sediments inside it. So what problem here is that the movement of sediments. So if the groins that is the good temporary structure are constructed perpendicularly and if it traps the you know, sediments, then no movement of sediments will take place. And as no movement takes place, the profile won't change and so the profile of the beach will be preserved. So the point which we previously learned that is the groins they are placed perpendicularly here in succession and they trap the sediments inside them and as they do not allow the movement of sediments the profile of the beach is preserved. So talking about the theoretical aspect along so sediment movements takes place in the zone along coast. So there is a confined zone where this movement of sediments uh, takes place along the shore that is in the along the length of the shore. Waves create currents transporting sediments. We have seen that the waves they constantly dash from the coast. They create the horizontal movement of water. Sand drifts in a zigzag line in the vicinity of the coast. So sand or sediment, as we have seen in the image, that the zigzag line is formed, which indicates the movement of the sediments along the length. Factors affecting the littoral drift are the direction of waves because as the direction of wave is inclined, it generates waves, and the wave generate currents. Also, the waves create the movement of sediments, that is the swash, which is the movement of sediments along the land portion, and then the sediments move towards the water body, that is the backwash, and that swash and backwash constantly continue and they change the or create the movement of the sediments. Amount of sediments in the water, as I told that the sediments are transported in the cluster in the bunch, so depending upon the sediments, the effect of the profile will be pronounced. Now this is another view for uh, littoral drift. The prevailing wind direction that will generate the waves in this same direction. And as you can see that here, the direction of swash is in this manner due to the direction of the wind. So wind generating waves and waves moving the sediments along the end portion. As you can see that back wash is always perpendicular. These are the back wash. And here, as the waves are moving in this specific direction. The horizontal movement of water that is currents will be generated from left to right. So here direction of longshore drift, you can see that it has been mentioned from left to right. Why? Because the waves which are constantly dashing with the coast, constantly coming in contact with the coast, will create horizontal movement of water from left to right into this inclined direction. So this is the direction of the longshore drift or the littoral drift. So this is the view for understanding littoral drift clearly in the different direction. So that's it uh, for this session. In this session we have completed tides and currents and for the remaining topics of chapter number 3 that is natural phenomena. This is the end of chapter number 3.